Hey guys, today is the last video in a four part series on LEGO Gears, and today I'm going to be covering specialty gears. Today's video is on specialty gears, and these are unique gears that serve a special purpose, and they have important properties that set them apart from gears in other families, and they also make them really useful. And in other words, these are important gears that don't necessarily fit into other categories. And without further ado, I'll show you the LEGO gears that are in the specialty family. The first gear I'd like to talk about in the specialty category is called a worm gear. I won't say too much about it here because I've already made a video that explains in more detail about what the worm gear is and how to build a casing for a worm gear. But what I will say is that the advantage of a worm gear is that it has a lot of gear reduction so it slows down the output shaft by a lot while multiplying the torque greatly. The other advantage of a worm gear is that it makes it so the output shaft cannot rotate the input shaft. It, uh, only the input can rotate the output, and that is a really cool property that comes in handy for a lot of uses, again which I explained in that other video. A worm gear in the LEGO system can mesh with either an 8 tooth gear or a 24 tooth gear. Next up we have 4 tooth knob wheels, which are really interesting because they don't look like gears at all, but they are indeed gears. They can only mesh with each other, so they can only form one-to-one -one ratios, and they can't mesh with any other gear ever. But they excel at forming 90 degree angles, and they're really good because they won't slip, because instead of having small teeth, they have really large, um, well, knobs on the, the gear, and that makes it so it's very difficult for them to slip. And again, like I said, they excel at 90 degree connections, which are usually prone to slipping. After that we have the 24 tooth clutch gear and this is just like a normal 24 tooth gear that I uh, talked about in my spur gear video. It meshes all the same ways as a normal 24 tooth spur gear. The one difference however is that gray disc in the middle allows the inside, uh, whatever axle inside to slip a little bit. And this is good for applications where you come up against a limit and you don't want the motor, whatever is driving it, to strain against whatever that limit is. And instead of straining, it's going to take the path of least resistance and slip and protect your mechanism instead of just grinding your gears into oblivion. And so that's what the usefulness of this clutch gear is. Another type of specialty gear that LEGO makes is a rack gear for a rack and pinion setup. And I've already made a video that discusses linear actuators and goes over rack and pinion in detail, so see that if you'd like. I'm just going to vaguely go over what they do here. They're a type of linear actuator which means they convert rotary motion into linear motion or vice versa. A rack gear is the long toothed bar that has all of the teeth running parallel to each other and it, it drives or is driven by a pinion gear. In this case, LEGO uses a pinion gear as a 12 tooth bevel gear. These types of gears are extremely useful for something like car steering and I use it for that application all the time. In fact, cars in real life most of the time will use rack and pinion type steering. Now I'll talk about differentials which are also really cool. LEGO makes two types, a conical type differential which is like the standard ring and pinion that you would find in a car and these split their power 90 degrees and a spur type differential which has a 24 tooth spur gear and this meshes just like any other 24 tooth gear and the shafts are going to be parallel as opposed to 90 degrees and what a differential does is it takes the input power and splits the output power between the two half shafts of the differential and these would go on the axle of a car and it allows the wheels of the car uh, on the axle to drive at different speeds so the car can successfully make a turn. Without a differential, both wheels are going to be spinning at the same speed and the wheels will be fighting themselves as the car turns. So that's what the application of a differential is. And finally, I'll be discussing the 16 tooth synchro gear. These are also known as 16 tooth clutch gears, but to avoid confusion with the 24 tooth clutch gear, which works slightly different, I'll be referring to these as synchro gears, and you'll know why in just a second. These are spur gears, just like the 16 tooth gear, and they mesh just the same way as a normal 16 tooth spur gear. Um, but the one difference is they don't have a cross axle on them, so they float freely on an axle. And on one end, they have a synchro mechanism where a red driving ring or synchro can lock into this gear, and it locks the gear into the axle so it no longer floats freely. 
and what these are used for is for transmissions and stuff where you want to switch where the power goes and in fact a actual car transmission in real life uses synchros similar to this to shift gears thanks for watching my tutorial this week if you found it helpful be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week and if you have an idea for a tutorial be sure to submit it in the comments section below thank you and i'll see you next time bye